Good evening and welcome to the coffee bar in my home. I'm Joseph Brewer and uh, we're continuing the discussions of my book, The Practical Guide for Church Ushers and Greeters. Tonight should be session 11, uh, if I've been counting correctly. Um, so we're going to continue on with the uh, incidents that we had at my church and uh, how we dealt with them and then uh, give you guys some resources that I have found very helpful. Um, let's jump back to last week just a little bit. Um, I mentioned the guy, the homeless guy and the woman um, pushing the stroller. There were two other things about that that I found very concerning. Um, so he pulled something out of, he, he set his backpack on the ground. He was standing on the sidewalk at the end of our church property, just before our driveway. And um, so he, you know, he was on public property, but he set his backpack on the ground. He pulled something out of his backpack. I couldn't see what it was. And he shoved it in um, like appendix carry, uh, like he put a weapon in his waistband. Now, I, I have no issue with that at all. I'm an American. I have no issue with somebody wanting to carry a weapon. Um, so that's not my problem. I just thought it was something to make note of. Um, should it become a tense situation where we actually, you know, I had to confront him, um, seeing that, noticing that, um, just I, I thought it was uh, something to make note of. And it was in the 80s and he put a scarf on um that you know it makes no sense to me unless he planned to use that scarf once he caught up with the woman um pushing the stroller now i, I mean I, I i can only guess what he may have planned with it but uh that was just odd. That was one of the, you know, it was, those were the two things he pulled out, whatever he tucked into his pants, the waistband of his pants and covered with his shirt and pulled out a scarf. And like I said, it was in the eighties. So that didn't work. That doesn't fit. Um, so both of those things, I uh, thought they were worth making note of and they both concerned me. So um, anyway, um, regarding that, I just want, I had thought about that this week. And I thought that was uh, important to note as well. So pay attention to what you can see, what you can see that the person is doing. You know, I, I, it may have been a weapon, it may not. But, you know, seeing him tuck it into the right front of his pants, like appendix carry, um, I, I, you know, it, it, it was worth... It was worth notice, noticing that and paying attention to that. Um, now, one of the other incidents we had, we had a guy that um, he parked across the street from our church. Now, there was a moving van in front of our church. One of our neighbors was moving, so I couldn't see uh, him across the street. I thought it was the moving van that I was hearing, like they were listening to the stereo or something anyway. Uh, but it was a guy across the street. and. He was actually having a conversation with somebody on the phone. He had it on speakerphone, had it all turned up all the way. And I thought it was somebody listening to like talk radio or something. And uh, I have no idea what the conversation was, but uh, there was a moving van between my position and where he was parked. And I was probably 75 feet away. I could still hear him um i could still hear it like it was in the moving van so anyway it was loud it was kind of strange uh but anyway he came across the street and he had attended our church before he was a friend of somebody at our church and um or an acquaintance maybe is a better word so anyway he started walking up and he had a i had something hanging around his neck um he had never done that before, and he was wearing a hat. When uh, the guy that knew him went to shake hands with him, he reached into the pouch that he had hanging around his neck 
pulled out some white cotton gloves and put gloves on his hands uh, to shake hands. So that was weird. Well, um, that's something that we noticed that people who, a couple of the guys that were issues um, that we saw as problems, they didn't want to be touched. Um, even shaking hands, they didn't want to be touched. You know, we had one guy that said, nobody touches God's anointed. Well, sorry, buddy, but you're not getting in our church. Um, and this guy put gloves on his hands so that there would be no actual contact. Um, he ended up getting into our building because it was during um, our prayer time or just before our prayer time. And we were still um, setting up our security, setting everything up. He got in, got up on the platform, um, started making some crazy um, suggestions about who he was. And we had to remove him from our building. So it, uh, it kind of freaked people out. And everybody was a little tense the rest of the day. But to me, I thought one of the things that was interesting to note was that the gloves again somebody who did not want to make physical contact shaking hands who ended up being a problem um so maybe something to pay attention to um i don't know it happened twice to us so is that an anomaly I i'm not sure so pay attention to that one um if somebody doesn't want to shake hands they may not, you may not want to let them into your auditorium so for me if you don't shake my hand, act normal, or shake one of my uh, ushers or greeters' hands and act normal, you're not getting in my building. Now, you know, if you're sick or something, I, I get that. And like I said before, during COVID, things were a little different. So we had to just gauge people by um, how they acted. So, um, but anyway, just something else to pay attention to, you know, you want people to act normal when you're uh, before you let him into your auditorium. We had another guest who he stayed through an evening service, but after the evening service, um, he decided to get loud with one of our church members. And he kept getting louder and he kept getting more aggressive. And um, it looked like it might spiral out of control. So we used a swarm tactic and I grabbed ushers, my security team, and I had them get other ones. And we all got out there and we all ended up standing in a group with the guy. He calmed down very quickly when he realized that we had all come up and that we were all there. So a swarm tactic, a presence where um, somebody that's looking to cause trouble um, or is, you know, in the process of causing trouble, that may um, deter that problem. Another incident we had, we had two guys. Okay, well, the first one, he stood across the street from our church for about 10 minutes, just stood there like he was sizing us up, looking at looking us over. And obviously that got our um, attention. But uh he was across the street. He wasn't actually doing anything threatening. Then a car pulls up and with another guy in it, and they start talking. And they talk for several minutes. Then um, the driver goes and parks his car. Then the two of them come over together to go into church. So they got our attention because of their approach. So we greeted them. They, uh, they were friendly enough. Uh, they passed all our checks, but <laughs> um, just because of that, um, and because it was peculiar, um, I went and I had uh, various ushers and other men from the church. You want to be friendly anyway, but I had them go and shake hands with the guys, introduce themselves, say hello, and so that those guys knew that uh, we saw them, we were paying attention to them. Then I had a couple of guys, um, I had one guy sit directly across from them, I had another guy sit behind them. Just, 
if they decided to do something, I wanted to make sure we had a presence there. And they were guys that had introduced themselves. So it, uh, you know, they knew we saw them, but we were being friendly. I mean, that's all we did. We were just friendly. But I put guys in a position, if they decided to act out, that um, we were ready for that. Then my other ushers um, were back about, oh, 15 feet from there. So, and they were paying attention as well. So all of us were on guard, paying attention. It ended up being nothing. But if you have somebody come in that you're not sure about, well, you know, have men, just several men, go shake their hand, let them know you see them. And you're, you're being friendly anyway. I mean, I, I, you want to be friendly. And, but, you know, set a couple of guys by them, you know, behind them, beside them. Um, and don't do it in a threatening way. They're not going to know any different because they're guests. So just go ahead, seat guys there so that they can monitor the situation. If things get, you know, if they start to act out, then you can, uh, they can address it. Um, <laughs> we had a weird one also, another weird one. Um, now we are in Los Angeles, so um, I don't know, you know, what it's like other places, but I was out front on security with another member of my team and a guy probably mid twenties, um, dressed in all black with a black backpack. He was walking up the sidewalk in front of our church. He passed the church. He wasn't looking for our church. Um, he got over probably 20, 30 feet past our church. And I don't know what was going on with the guy, but he stopped. And it was almost like somebody had called him um, from the church. He looked back. He looked up, saw the sign, you know, the name of our church. He got a weird look on his face, turned around, came back. Well, um, my partner that was out there with me that, that evening um, on security, what we do is we get in front of our doors. Um, so he got in front of the door. I maintained my position about, eh, I was probably 10 or 15 feet away. And he reached out to shake hands and greet the guy. And he told him his name when he reached his hand out. And the guy goes, and he, he got a weird look on his face. And he goes, I'm Jesus. And uh, so, but there was something off. I, I don't know what it was, but there was something off. So, but, you know, the, the guy that was out there with me, he uh, told him, um, we already have Jesus. Uh, you need to just keep on going. Um, when he turned the corner, um, and started back along the same path again he, he he had a really weird look on his face I, I don't I don't know what he intended now we wouldn't have let him in with his backpack so um but uh it was just a weird situation all the way around but it was just one of our you know again back to our checks um shake your hand um see if you act normal and uh you know when this guy said that and he wasn't acting uh normal no keep moving um we're not gonna i'm not gonna let you in my auditorium um and i touched on this one before uh we had a guy that had double parked and he was taking pictures and video of our property um inside of our auditorium during our choir practice it upset quite a few people now I probably didn't handle this one the best. Um, so this is more of a cautionary tale. But um, once I got there, um, once I was notified of it, and I went out front, I stood in front of his SUV because he wasn't driving away without talking to me. That part was probably dumb. Uh, but I stood there. I waited for him to roll his window down. And I walked over there again, maybe not the smartest idea to confront him that way, but he needed to know that wasn't going to fly. Um, you're not going to um, just show up, start taking videos and pictures and 
and scaring people unchecked. Uh, so anyway, um, but he mentioned names of longtime members. He said his family had been uh, founding members of that church. So it was okay. Um, turned out that it was nothing, um, there was no issue, no problem, other than he scared people. So then I had to go let him know um, that what had happened. But um, partly it was my response that I wanted to mention, because I'm not sure that I handled that properly. So, but, you know, in the heat of the moment, um, in my, my, I guess my zeal to watch out for our people, I placed myself in a dangerous situation. Um, so you may want to um, use better judgment than I did at that moment, but I I felt I had to let him know. I, I couldn't let it go unchecked. And so, like I said, you know, probably not the best way to have handled it, but I got the answers I needed. He knew that it wasn't uh, appropriate the way he did it. And um, it turned out not to be anything. So anyway, um, those were some of the incidents that we've dealt with. There's been more, but uh, that kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that we've had happen, how we have, um, and how we've handled them. So now what I want to do is I want to give you uh, some of my, uh, my favorite resources. And so I tried to figure out a, a, a classier way to do this, but I, I'm sorry, I just, I haven't been able to figure it out. So I printed it out and I'm just going to hold it up here for you. So if you have questions uh, that you, for me or comments, you can get to me, aka joebrewer.com is my website. You can uh, contact me through there or aka joebrewer at yahoo.com. Um, if you have questions, now there's some, that's something else too. Um, if enough people have questions uh, that they would like me to try and address and email me, I'll do another session to answer those questions. Um, and if there's somebody wants to do a live session, uh, we can try and do that also. But you'll have to contact me and let me know if that's something you're interested in. Now, Warrior Poet Society uh, you can see the link there. Sorry, I'm a little shaky just holding this up. Um, they have a series, I think it's 10 church security videos. I found those to be a great resource. I agree with, um, I think I agreed with everything that uh, they presented. Uh, great organization, Warrior Poets Society. Uh, you can check them out on YouTube. You can go to their website. But um, you won't, it, it, it took me a while to find their church security videos. So use that link right there. And um, it's, uh, um, it, it's worth your time to check out those videos. Sheepdog seminars. Uh, these guys are great. Um, very helpful. Uh, they collaborate with face-based security networks and uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. Now, uh, so they have training. Um, they do an annual training seminar for church security. They do uh, seminars across the country. They tour with uh, um, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman also at times and work with him. Now, outside of the Bible, um, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman's books are the best books I have ever read on, if you, on, if you want to understand men, if you want to understand how we tick, how we work, how we think, how we rationalize and deal with things, um, including stress and all of those things. You're going to want to check out his books. Uh, they are fan a fantastic resource um, on killing. Um, now, the topics, um, you know, don't let the topic fool you. Um, my opinion is if women want to understand men, they should read on killing um, because he gets into a lot of just the psychology of how um, men work, how we tick, how we think, what we do. So check it out. Um, also, uh, like I and, and then also he has on combat and um, assassination generation. 
that's an that's another great read both of those are great reads assassination generation gets into um all the uh mass i hate to call them mass shootings but um they're mass murder um you know people used guns for mass murder but he went and personally investigated those um assassination generation he gets into that in depth uh great resource something that um you're going to want to read cv ministries again another church uh resource so i hope you got these if not um back up pause write them down uh sorry i'd like to have done it a little classier than that that was the best i could do um so those are some of my favorite resources um check them out they're uh they're really good um particularly those videos i i really like the videos that warrior poet society did um i've been to sheepdog seminar um with uh lieutenant colonel dave grossman there doing bulletproof mind um great stuff you you really need to um check into those now a couple more things i'm gonna plug a couple of more things of mine uh, as you can see right up here um did you notice his feet uh you can find that on youtube it should be on all music platforms um but that's my song i, I wrote the song um and then I hired everybody else to um, do the work on it. So if you see that picture, did you notice his feet? Um, check it out. Um, I, I think you'll find it to be a blessing for you. Also, uh, I wrote another book, Cleaning Mommy's Appliances, uh, The Grand Adventures of Me and Kitty. It's not spiritual. Um, it's just fun. It just And all the kids that I know that have read it, uh, they all came to the right conclusion. The kitty was the problem, not the little boy. Um, it's a story about me and my cat when I was little, and I was pretty um, obnoxious with my cat. So anyway, uh, check out my book, this book also. Um, there's a part two to it, but I didn't have the, I don't have one here so I could show you. Um, but anyway, so uh, thanks for coming by. And um We'll talk again. If you have any questions, like I said, if you want me to answer questions or do a session uh, answering questions, you're going to have to reach out to me uh, through my website or through uh, Yahoo. And again, you can see aka Joe Brewer at just dot uh, com or at yahoo.com. So anyway, um, let's pray and we will close this session for tonight. Father, thank you for the opportunity to uh, spend time with these folks. I pray that uh, you used me to be a blessing to them. I pray that you would bless them, bless their churches, uh, use them in the lives of all the folks that they come in contact with and protect them. And I pray, Father, that they would uh, always remember that um, prayer is their full, first alternative, not their last alternative. Pray that you bless them, use them, watch over them, protect their churches, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good night.